So yeah, uh, uh, my company's called WhiteSpark, and we do search engine optimization typically for small business. So we focus on local SEO. Um, so that's, if, if you're a service area business, local SEO is all, you're all about SEO. If you type in Landscapers Edmonton or Accounts Edmonton, you're going to get a local pack. And our company really specializes on uh, optimizing your position in that local pack. So I'm going to talk about two things today. I want to talk about your website, how you can make sure your website is more uh, search friendly. And I'm going to talk about your online reviews and reputation and how that feeds into your, your local search rankings as well. So let's get started with the website. Uh, your website is one of the essential keys to your rankings. There's all these other factors that are very important for rankings, uh, but the website uh, really makes up a lot of that. So this is the uh, search local search ranking factor study uh, that I'm a, a participant of. About 33 people in the, across the U.S. and Canada uh, participate in this study, and we just sort of figure out you know what's what's driving search ranking. So it makes up 21% of of the search uh, ranking algorithm. But one thing to keep in mind is that even if you had 100% on everything else, if your website is garbage, then you, you still won't rank. You really need to show Google that you have a good website and you have good content. So I'm going to go talk about some of those things. So here's more about uh, search ranking factors. The first thing you need to do when you're thinking about uh, optimizing your website is what keywords am I going to optimize for? So I'm going to show you a really quick process for identifying them, uh, some valuable keywords. So the first one. First step is to just brainstorm. Okay, well, what are what's what, what am I going to rank for? People are going to search for landscapers or landscaping companies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you want to make sure that you uh, have uh, brainstormed those keywords out, save those in a spreadsheet. Then you want to get uh, the related terms. So in Google, if you search for that keyword at the very bottom, you'll see related terms. Copy and paste those. These are terms that Google is telling you are related to landscapers or accounts or whatever. Uh, my example here was wedding photographers. So uh, then there's this awesome software called Ubersuggest. So Ubersuggest uh, basically compiles all the data from Google Suggest. And Google Suggest is when you start typing landscapers into the uh, Google search bar, you get a drop down of, of automatic uh, suggestions. So Ubersuggest pulls all of that in. So you feed in your keywords, and Ubersuggest will return all of the things that Google uh, is suggesting for the auto suggest. Uh, once you have that list, you, you're going to end up with a pretty big list of keywords. You're going to manually go through that and just clean it up and prioritize. Like say, okay, well these are obviously important terms. These terms less important. Uh, this term is completely unrelated. So like sometimes it'll show a competitor's name in the Uber suggest. So just filter out all the garbage, and now you've got yourself a pretty good keyword list. So take that keyword list you just generated, and you could run it through the AdWords keyword tool, and it'll show you search volume. So it'll show you how much uh, how many searches per month that particular term is getting, and that'll really help you prioritize. So obviously you want to target terms that are uh, searched more often. Uh, so you can do that to get the search volume. I'll, I'll make sure that the, uh, my slide decks are distributed to uh, everybody here. So Nick, uh, if you can just put them up and then send an email to all the Eventbrite uh, people. And so you'll get my slide decks, you don't have to scramble to write all this down. So now you've got your list. You, I've got all these keywords. Uh, I've got to figure out which pages are going to be structured around which terms. And one of the common mistakes I see with, uh, with small businesses is they have one page called services. And on that page, they have bullet points about all the different services they provide. That is not content that's going to help you at all. So you want to make sure that you build out a special page for every single service, and then you can target those keywords to those pages. So let's say you're a landscaper and you do um, weed control, you do uh, mowing, you do uh, landscape design. Each one of those services should be a separate page. So when you have that, you can actually target these keywords really nicely to those pages. And so um, next up. Uh, let's go through the basics of website optimization. One thing to keep in mind is that in 2000, back in the day, SEO was really based on this trickery. You would be doing all kinds of stuff like injecting keywords and, and trying to hide keywords. All that BS doesn't work anymore. Today, SEO is based on trust. You want to establish yourself as a real business that Google can see is doing things the right way. And that will actually have a higher impact on your rankings than any of the trickery that used to work. So number one is have a decent amount of content on your home page. A lot of businesses do this. They've just got this like splash page, little tiny blurb about their business. 
That homepage is so important to your rankings because it's the page that generally has all of the link equity. So anytime people link to your business, they go to the homepage. So because of that, it's the page that has the highest chance of ranking. So make sure that you really build out your content on your homepage. You want to write out various snippets about the different services you do, how long you've been in business, the history of the business. Put all that kind of stuff into your homepage and that will help it to be more relevant for the terms that you're targeting. Also target the most important key phrases, the obvious head terms. So if your landscaper would be landscaping, landscaper, make sure that those key phrases are, are properly represented on the homepage. So here's an example of what not to do. This is a photography company in Edmonton. And here's a good example of what to do. So this is a nicely structured page. I believe this is uh, Capital Plumbing and Heating. They've got you know, snippets about the various things that they do and it still is readable and scannable and helps. You know, it's not just a big wall of text. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that Google ignores click to expand. So you might think, oh well, I don't want all this text on my homepage. We'll just put in like a read more and when you click it, it expands. Google uh, has, has uh, come out and said that, so here's an example of what that is. You click that and then it expands. You click this and it expands. So Google has come out and said this in a hangout. This is John Mueller. He's a in, uh, in search engineer at Google. He kind of replaced Matt Cutts as our source of information at Google. And uh, he said that they, they will no longer, they're just going to ignore that content. You see it all the time, actually. So if you, if you do a site colon search on your website, you can see that that content is not coming up. If you Google that, you can see all these articles talking about it. And then Dr. Pete had a pretty, uh, a pretty good response to it. He said, Google claims click to expand content may be misleading to users. And so he's, he's, she's showing a Google search result with a click to expand for hypocrisy. I thought that was pretty good. Uh, so second, you want to make sure you have a web page for every service and subservice. I mentioned that briefly already. So don't do this. This is this like bullet points. These are all the plumbing services. So they do, you know, uh, bathroom and kitchen sink repair. They do dishwasher repair, garburetor repair. These are all the things that this business does. The, you will not rank for garburetor repair just because you mentioned that key phrase, that word once on a page. If you created a page and it was a very good detailed page about your garburetor repair service, now you have the chance to start ranking for garburetor repair. You'll see this happen. Businesses will start with a really basic website like this kind of a thing, and as they start building out these service pages, their traffic will double, triple, quadruple because they are now attracting traffic for all of these more obscure terms that people are searching for. People that have a broken garburetor don't really go to Google and say plumbers. They, they like garburetor repair Edmonton. And without this page, you don't have a chance of ranking. If you create the page, you're really going to be able to target that term. And another thing about it is make sure that you create the best page. Google can see all the content. We have a client at Pringle Law. They're in Edmonton. And they have really taken to heart that recommendation. They have a page on DUI law that is, I think, seven, 8,000 words, maybe 12,000 words. It's ridiculous. It's so long. It has everything anyone that's been charged with DUI wants to know about DUI law in Alberta. And they rank absolutely number one for everything. Because, think about it, Google wants to return the best answer to their users. Someone types in something, they want to see the best answer. That's why that page ranks so well. So little bits of content. You, you can have a nice little thing above the fold for people that just don't want to read. They want to get the basics and then call you. You should have that, but then make sure you go into detail down below. It makes a huge difference. Uh, have plenty of quality content throughout the site. So <laughs> this, this, this example is out of control. This is a, a personal injury lawyer in Chicago. And this is, so he's got this on, on this side here, car accidents, truck accidents, motorcycle accidents other motor vehicle accidents. So he's got all these categories. But then within each category, he goes out of control, like breaking this down. Aggressive driving, backing accidents, car accident ins insurance claims, car tire blowout. So he's created a page for every possible thing. So imagine he did this keyword research and really took it to the next level. And then he's like, okay, every one of these keywords I'm making an amazing page for. So he's done that. And he said that uh, he basically took his traffic um, to something like 80,000 visits a month. So he, he gets a ton of traffic on all of these terms. Go into detail, create the best page on the topic. This article here is ridiculous too. So uh, this is another client of ours, Farz Ad Law, and they wrote this article on uh, child custody laws in, in California. Uh, this is just the very top of the page. The page is so long, you, like this is how it would fit on here. I took a screenshot of the entire page. This, pa this page I think is like 25,000 words. So it's, it's really nuts. 
you don't have to go to that level, especially in a local market like Edmonton. Depends on how competitive things are. Um, people aren't really thinking about that, but um, divorce law in Orange County, that works for him. So he, he has lots of competition. Uh, so blogging, that's a good question. Well, okay, well, do I want to write all this content on my website or should I, have to, should I be doing blog posts all the time? So original thoughts, long form quality content, yeah, do that. A company updates, sure, that makes sense. So you know, you've just hired somebody or uh, you, you've got some news to announce, so it's a great thing to put on your blog. Scheduling this whole idea of like, oh, we've got to bang out one post per week and it has to be 500 to 800 words, don't do that. It's garbage. No one's going to leave you any comments. No one's going to be uh, uh, liking it on social. It's just really basic, boring content. Google probably sees about one million pages of this go into the index every single day. And as a result, they ignore it. They're not looking for that. They're looking for next level content that people are actually paying attention to. So if you don't have something important to say, don't say it. Take all that time that you would invest in one blog post per week and say, okay, one, one killer post per quarter where we're really going to invest time into research and, and just put something together that, that our particular industry will be interested in and share. That's the way you want to take things. And if you can't write, a lot of small businesses don't have time or the skill to write. There are good services out there. This is one that we use uh, with, with our service because we need a lot of content for our clients beyond what we can provide internally. Um, and so we use this uh, service called Xeris and we always buy at the highest level. At the highest level you pay like 50 cents per word and so the average article is like two to three hundred dollars and they, they actually write very good content by subject matter experts that really know the topics. So uh, one SEO factor are, is your URL structure. There's not that much to say about it. So your URLs, you know, the top ones there are a good idea. So you just want to keep it simple. Domain slash about us, uh, slash business photography, slash wedding photography, slash baby photography. Just don't spam it. While it may be a thing that you'll read on some SEO guides that keywords in the URL are helpful, some people take it way too far, like this uh, bottom one, Edmonton Services, Wedding Photo Services, Wedding Photography in Edmonton. It's just over the top and it's absolutely unnecessary. Don't spam that, it can actually hurt you. Um, title tags. So the title tags, uh, let me show you what that is. The title tag appears in the search results. So I got Toy Stories in Edmonton, and then I've uh, circled, that's the, in blue is the title tag. It's not something you actually see on the web page itself, it's just something in the code that Google uses to identify the topic of the page. And it does show it in the search results. So this is apparently, well, and I would agree, it's one of the most important places to make sure you have keywords in your, uh, on your pages. So if you're doing a page on garburetor repair, then you want to make sure garburetor repair is in the title tag and variations of that term. And of course, you want to get Edmonton there as well. So these are very important. Uh, in WordPress, so if you use the Yoast uh, WordPress plugin, they have this little thing where you can edit the SEO title. That's where you would edit your title tag. I'm sure a lot of small businesses are using WordPress. Um, so here's my suggested format. This is the way we do it. We have keyword, city, we use a little pipe or a dash, and then the business name. That, that's, we want to keep it simple and we don't want to stuff it with too many keywords. So criminal defense, lawyers, Edmonton, Pringle, Chiver, Sparks, Teske. That's, that's the way we would do our title tag. So if we were doing DUI, a DUI page, it would be DUI Lawyers Edmonton, Pringle Chip Sparks, Sparks Teske. So there are synonyms. There's DWI Lawyers or Drunk Driving Lawyers. Don't stuff them all in there. Google understands synonyms and it doesn't really need you to, to put every possible variation in there. Uh, this is just a really bad example of what not to do. That, that's a really, really long one where they've tried to jam every single keyword into their title tag. So the next thing is the meta description. Uh, your meta description looks like this in the search results. It's also not shown on your page. You don't see it in, in the, on the page. You only, it's only in the code. And it describes what this page is for the search engines. So this meta description, one thing really important is that it is not factored into your search results. So you put any keywords you want there, it'll have no impact on your search rankings. What it does impact is your click-through rate. Um, th if, you, if you ever do, do any AdWords, and you think about your ad copy, you know, the way you write your ad will encourage people to be like, oh, that sounds like something I want, I'll click on that. Um, so you want to make sure that you're writing very good descriptions of the page that will entice people to click. So now there's this thing called the meta keywords tag. You may have heard of this before. 
It was a thing way back in 1998, but the meta tag is completely ignored by search engines today. So do not waste time with the meta keywords tag. And I think if I go back to this screenshot, this is the worst, uh, this is the worst offender of the propagation of the meta keywords tag. The Yoast plugin still provides like a focus keyword. And I think in there it turns that into your meta keywords tag. And so people think it's a thing, but it actually has no impact on your search rankings. I just had a client the other day that we used to do their website for years ago. And he contacted me and he's like, he's been hounding me to do some website updates for him. We don't really do that anymore. And so I was like, well, okay, well, we're going to do it. What do you need? And so he sent, he, what he wants to do is add the meta keywords tag to his whole, the whole website. And I was like, you don't need to do that. It's a complete waste of, of your time. So don't put the meta keywords tag on your website. Headings, uh, H1, H2, H3, they factor into search rankings. So if you can tweak the heading without making it spammy, then it's a good idea. So for example, welcome to Faraz, Faraz Auto Sales. And then if you said Faraz, Faraz Auto Sales, Toronto Luxury Used Car Specialist, you're getting luxury used cars into the heading, which is helpful. So as long as you can do so in a way that is not spammy and natural to read, then it's kind of a good idea to try and get your keywords into your heading tags. Uh, image alt attribute is another um, SEO factor that people uh, look at. The, the way it works is, in your you don't see this on the page, you only see it in the code. So here's an image. Um, you can put an alt attribute, and this is actually typically used for uh, vision impaired people so they can actually see what that image is about and so you want to try to keep that in mind that so if you're writing a, a tag that it's something that would describe the image um, but if you can get the keyword in there it's supposed to have a slight correlation with improved ranking so in this case here's one of our plumbers working on a job in Edmonton you're getting the word plumbers and you're getting Edmonton and it describes the picture so you might want to do that for your images it helps just sort of get those keywords into the page a little bit more Keywords in bold and or italics, you know, people will talk about that. And I still think that's kind of trickery. You know, think about what a search engine is seeing when they see this web page. You know, oh, look, this keyword's been bolded and italicized. This web page is so great. I'm going to improve your rankings just because you bolded the, uh, the keywords. So maybe that's the way it used to be, and I think it did have an impact way back in the day. But today, search engines are much more sophisticated. Uh, and then... For the love of Google, do not over-optimize. This is a great example. Key, they use the word Edmonton 32 times in their homepage content, and they use the word photographer 34 times in their homepage content. This has more of a chance to hurt you than to help you. Just write naturally for people. It, just write naturally for your website visitors, and if you add a decent amount of content, the keyword topic will usually be present without trying to cram it in. So internal linking, so this is linking from your home page to all of your other pages. This is actually very valuable. You want to make sure that you're doing. If you mention something that you cover in another page of your site, make sure that you are linking that to that specific page. So if you're on your home page, you say, you know, we, we also do garburetor repair. Link that, link the word garburetor repair to your garburetor repair page. That's very valuable. You want to make sure that you're doing that. Uh, don't do it unnaturally. Like these people are trying to spam their their internal anchor tag, so Winnipeg used car dealers, Winnipeg used car dealers, used car dealer in Winnipeg, like they're really trying to optimize that, that's not necessary, just, you know, if you, if you mention used car dealer once, you might link to your used car, car dealer page, if you had that page. Uh, fast <coughs> loading is very important. Uh, this is a thing that has really started to pick up steam in SEO. If your website takes forever to load, it can hurt your search ranking. So make sure that you have a fast loading page. Uh, this is the Google page speed test. You can kind of run through this. It'll tell you exactly what's wrong with it and how to fix it. You can give that to your developers and say, uh, hey, can you fix this up? And there's also a service um, specifically for WordPress. I think it's 500 bucks and they'll go through your WordPress site and they will consolidate all your plugins and they will optimize things, they'll insert caching and all kinds of things to speed up your website. So the, the WordPress service is kind of handy to get. If you just go WordPress speed service in Google, you'll find it. Make sure your website works on mobile. Uh, there was this big algorithm update where Google said if your website's not mobile optimized, you're going to lose all your rankings. So that, that update came and went and nobody lost their rankings. So Google's trying to scare people into making sure their website's mobile friendly. Um, but we are starting to see a trickle of evidence that sites that are mobile friendly have a better chance of ranking than sites that aren't. If you're not doing this now, it's just time to bite the bullet and rebuild your website so that it's nice, uh, nicely done. You want to, that would go with responsive instead of a dedicated mobile site. Some people have m.domain.com as, as their mobile site. You end up with duplicate content issues there. So what you want to do is just make sure you build a nice responsive website. 
Uh, there are a lot of really good responsive WordPress themes. So you just get the theme, customize it, and it's good to go. You can use this whole uh, test at Google to test how mobile friendly your website is. That's handy to use. And then I also really like this test. This is at feedthebot.com. It just gives you a little bit more information than the Google test. Good site structure. So if you have a ton of content, Google needs to be able to crawl that content. Your goal is to minimize the number of clicks from the home page. So for example, let's say a blog is a really great example of this. You know, if you wrote an article on your blog that was pretty good back in 2011, how long does it take Google to get to that blog when they hit your home page? They, they go to the home page, then they click the blog, then they click the, uh, the home page, and they have to click next, 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 next. Before they find that really great article, you've, you've basically pushed that so far away from your site's link authority, all the link authorities on the home page, that that page itself has no authority anymore. So it doesn't really have the chance to rank. This is another reason why I really like putting all of your important content on services pages rather than in blog posts because it ends up getting pushed out of the index. So site structure is very important and you can do this really well. If you have a ton of content, you can do it really well. This example here, this Rosenfeld injury lawyers in Chicago, um, if we look at how many pages he has on his website, 5,210 web pages on his website. If you just do a site colon put in the website in Google, it'll tell you how many pages are indexed. You got that many pages indexed. Uh, if you ran this query um, six months ago, it probably would have been about 1,200. So he had like thousands of pages on his website that were not indexed at all. So what he did is he worked with a web development company to come up with this new site structure. And the site structure is, you know, you go from your home page, then you can go practice areas and have this drop down, and you can jump into any of these practice areas. But once you get into it, the sidebar will jump you into all of the other ones. So Google has this nice sort of a web to get to all the different pages of his site. His site traffic uh, in a week when he launched the new website went up 400% because now all of this new content is, is accessible and indexable by Google. So this really only applies if you're writing a ton of content. Most small businesses aren't going to do this, but you still want to keep it, your site structure in mind. There are some key local hooks in local SEO. So this is a lot of the stuff that I talked about was just basic SEO, organic rankings. The local pack has a couple of things, or a few things that are very important to make sure that are happening to connect your website with your local listing at Google to get that local pin marker. So one of them is having your NAP in schema. So schema is a markup language that helps Google identify structured data. So structured data would be your name, address, and phone number, or a review, or a recipe. So in, in the case of a local business, the structured data we want to mark up is your name, address, and phone number. If you just look at our website in about a week, we're going to have a schema generator where you just sort of put in your business information and click go and it's going to generate the code for you. There are schema generators out there already. So just Google schema generator, it'll generate the code, give that code to your web developer, he'll make sure it's on your website. So you want that on the footer. Like if you, if you only have one location, that schema name address, and, that name address and phone number in schema should be on the footer or header of every single page of your site. It helps really connect your website with your business listing. And so this is a testing tool just to make sure that it works. You can test your schema and make sure that it's correct. So another thing you want to do to help connect your, your website with your business listing is embed a Google map. You want to do this the, the right way. So the right way to do it, these instructions, a little outdated because just last week they changed this, but you basically search for the business and then you will go hit this little gear and go share an embed map. In the new Google Maps, it's actually on the side. There's this weird little hamburger menu. It's got like three lines. You click that, which opens up a side panel. Then that share and embed map button is there. Just FYI, this has changed a little bit. And then that's the map you should embed. So the, what most businesses do is they actually embed a map to the address, not to the business listing. When you embed a map to the business listing, you're really helping connect your website with that business listing. So your landing page title tag is another place where you want to get the local sort of connection. In your, on your Google listing, this is the, the URL here. The landing page is the page that you get to when you click that. I guarantee everyone in this room is your home page. So, and this is the format again, because you've got the word Edmonton in there, and you're connecting it with the business. You want to match the business name here with the business name that you put in your title tag. That really helps connect the two. Make sure you link back to your Google Plus page. Um, your Google Plus local listing. So if you have a claimed listing at Google, somewhere on the page you should have a G, G Plus icon where you link back to your Google Plus listing. That's another way to sort of connect the website with the listing. And uh, I guess that's it.
So we have some time for uh, questions about website stuff, and then I'm going to roll right into uh, another talk that I have about reviews and how to get more online reviews.